the first test of the summer in Australia is there's a lot of focus on it and it's a big hype and it's great to be a part of it and just to be given a chance. Look, I just think it's going to be an exciting test series here with Pakistan. It's going to be a little bit different without heels. Everyone was wrapped for Gilly and everyone knew what Gilly could do and couldn't wait to see him play for Australia. But at the same time, everyone loved heels. To, to see him not there was a real change of the guard, I guess, as far as Australian cricket was concerned. But it didn't take Gilly long to get into, in, into his stride. But he got 80-odd in that game, didn't he? And then his next game was, was pretty good as well down in Hobart. As much as he doesn't like to talk about his batting or whatever else, I mean, his game was all based around his wicket-keeping, even the way that he trained, you know. His batting was almost an afterthought, which with the way he played was probably a good thing. I think if he had thought more about his batting and worked harder on his batting, he probably wouldn't have been as good as he was. He was ready, and I think he, he proved that right from the start. You know, the right sort of guy to come in, and, and a good batting lineup to come in behind as well. You know, we had a lot of good players ahead of him. That you know, when you're coming in down there and playing like he does against tiring attacks, he can make a mess of them pretty quickly. I think I might have got my first duck in Test cricket actually that that game in Brisbane. Oh, it's close. That's close. Yes, he's got him. Yes, he's got him. And then two more the next game. So, do we have to talk about this series? I've got much, I haven't got much good to talk about. Call of yes, and that is the winning run. A very good performance from Australia. Just a spring and a step of the Pakistanis at the moment. They are worth, they can bomb Australia around about 300, and Australians have to bat last. Long way to go yet. Oh, he's bowled him! Oh, it's all happening! That's superb cricket! Wacky Eunice knocks over Ricky Ponting. That's the thing about Pakistan that I keep talking about. I mean, they. They've just, they've just always had great players that are capable of doing some amazing things. I mean, Sayed Amar was a brilliant player. Ian's mum scored, what, 11 or 12,000 test runs or something. And you talk about Akrams and Eunice's and Sack Lame, the first one to ever probably bowl a Doja in world cricket. I mean, their attack was outstanding. There are two places to be at the moment. It's home in your lounge room or the commentary box. It's a joy to watch. It's not easy facing a man at this pace. Oh, he's got him, he's got him. It's well bowled, beautifully bowled. Oh, that's out. Plum LBW, what a wicket that is. Oh, and he's taken a brilliant catch. I was keen to do well in front of my home crowd and mum and dad and everyone's down there. And the first duck I got in Brisbane, at that stage, I was the leading run scorer in the history of Test cricket without a duck. Right? I got one duck and I got a pair in Hobart. Oh, he's gone across a long way and it is a pair for Ricky Ponting. So half the Australian side are now back in the pavilion. And that'll be a very disappointed Ricky Ponting. I think we probably all left the ground on day four thinking that there's no chance in the world we can win. But then Gilly just to take over and play the way that he did was you know, just amazing. It was just, just felt like we'd sort of stolen a game, really. I mean, it was that's how it sort of felt. That's a good shot. Gilly Pitch is a very, very aggressive player. Full pitch and he puts it away. There's a big shout. But uh, the umpire has not moved at all. It's mentioned a lot because of how much Justin cheated <laughs> when he nicked that one and told us for seven years that he had a clicky handle in his bat. Look at this one. Look at that one. Oh, there's definitely a noise there. It's actually become a really big joke around the team. It's, it's the Justin Langer seven year rule because he didn't, he, he didn't admit it for seven years afterwards. Absolutely smacked through mid wicket. Sat next to Junior the whole time in that little viewing room there at, at Bill Reeve, and every time we hit a boundary, we'd sort of look at each other, and there'd be another boundary, and it's like, we're going to get, we're going to get this done here. Straight down the ground, that'll be it. What a beautiful shot, and that is a superb century. Shot. That's four. That's down the hill. And there's the hundred for Justin Langer. He's fourth in Test cricket and second against Pakistan. He was convinced he was getting dropped after that game. If he didn't make 100, he was out. His dad had flown down to watch what might have been his last game, and JL got 100, and his dad greeted him at the gate and gave him a big hug and spent the rest of the night with us in the dressing room down in Bell Reeve. It was awesome. So, you yeah, know, there's another story that comes out of a, a fantastic test. It wasn't all about Gilly. You know, there's other, there's other stories going on as well, and Justin's was a, a huge part of that one. That is it. That is the winning run. The Australians have pulled off what I think is one of the finest victories I've ever seen in Test cricket. The very best Test teams that I played in, you know, whether it was when Stephen was captain or even when I was captain, it was 
we actually got ourselves into as much trouble in test matches as other teams did, but it was just a, a moment like that with Gilly getting 150 and winning the game, or Damien Martin goes out and gets 100, or you know, Glenn McGrath comes on and takes four for in a spell, and, or Warney did it. There was someone just had the ability just to say, it, it basically changed the game in a session. That was what I loved about that side. The, the, un, the unwavering belief, I reckon, that that group of players had, and on the back of things like Hobart, you know, if you can get out of a game and win that like we did there, then you can win anything. You can, and that was the sort of confidence that was starting to, to breed, I guess, around that team. Going to Perth, I was obviously nervous. If just for your own personal pride and stuff, you, you, know, you want to have an impact on a series, and I'd had three innings in the series and not done anything. I knew they were bowling a certain way to me. When I walked out the bat in Perth, Mohamed Akram actually was bowling, and I knew he was going to bowl it full and straight and try and hit me right in the peg, because that's how I got it. I got bowled in Hobart first innings, and then LB in the second. So I knew they were going to bowl full and straight and try and hit my stumps again. And first ball, I got through my wicket for maybe four, actually, three or four. And that's fixed that problem. Enormous cheer here from the Wacker crowd. It's a no ball. And Ricky Ponting has now scored three runs in the series. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that easy either, that game, because Shoal bowled like the wind from one end. We always had this bit of a thing with him that he would just save himself up for certain spells in the day, so it wasn't always going to run in and bowl 150, 560 k's an hour. Anyway, I ran in and bowled the first ball, and I sort of took big stride forward and let it go, and it sort of died on the way through to the keeper, and it was about 135 k's an hour. And I sort of followed him down and got up to Lang, I said, I told you, he's going he's gonna to dog it, he's going to dog it again here today. Well, I don't know if he heard me or not, but for the next hour and a half, it was like, it was the quickest bowling that I've ever faced. I mean, I back myself against most to try and get a hook shot or a pull shot away, but when you watch some of the footage of some of the balls that he bowled, I was getting into a position to try and hit him and they were just gone. And then I'd look around and see, you know, Mo and Khan with one glove, you know, on the 30 metre circle, catching them above his head, the ball was still on the way up. And even when I did get bat on one, hit one and take off for a single, I'd look up and Justin would be like, no, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm right up this end, thank you. Look after that end and I'll look after this end. So, uh, yeah, he was, he was quick. Oh, and he's gone for the hook shot there. That's gone way over the top. Way over the top. Four runs. You got a few pull shots away. Were you trying to take them on, or was that just the adrenaline pumping? Or oh, it's just instinct. Especially in Perth, where, yes, it's quick, but it's the bounce is so consistent and true that, you know, there in Brisbane, we're always the best places to play off the back foot, certainly hooking and pulling anyway. Good shot. Very well played. He loves that pull shot. It's hit the fence. I was trying, I just wasn't good enough, quick enough to catch up with a few of them. Easily the fastest spell I've ever faced. And, I mean, this is probably showing my age as well, but I've still got a video cassette of it. I talk about batting with Justin that day, and we talk about it together all the time. You know, we, we are best of mates. We were actually like brothers, and when we played and batted together, that was what it was like. It was, it was like you're out there batting with your brother. I've said it a lot. If I was ever going to go bat again in a test match, I'd go and bat with him. And he'll come back. That's well done. Takes a lot of character to come back from three ducks on the trot in a test series and make a hundred. You know, I was filthy on myself that day for getting out when I did. You know, worked as hard as I did and got to 197 and then smack one to backward point. And got, all I was thinking about was a boundary and pick backward point out. Smashed it. He's gone. He's caught in the gully for 197. Can you believe that? Ponning goes. Ejaz takes the catch. The end of a magnificent innings. He's disappointed, but a superb knock from a guy who hadn't scored a run previously in the series. It was a very important innings. So, as I said, if I had a failed again, then who knows what might have happened. That's it. Australia win the series 3-0. Good catch by Warren.